Andrew Rains here with Apex Pro. Today we're going to talk about three things to look at in my Apex Pro data from Road Atlanta, one of the best, one of the best racetracks in the country in my opinion. Um, love turning laps there. We're going to talk about turn one, turn five, and turn six, and I think those are three corners that are somewhat overlooked at this racetrack. Uh, a lot of people talk about turn seven, 10A, 10B complex, and 12, so I'm going to talk about the front half of the track. Um, all these places are places where we're trying to conserve speed and spend as little amount of time at low speed as possible. Um, so they have some things in common. I'm going to start with turn one. Um, the thing I want to emphasize with turn one, we're going to analyze it using the speed trace, but I want to emphasize looking at a bunch of different laps when you're trying to figure out what you're doing and trying to set goals with your data. Um, I actually found that down here, lap 35, it was one of my best laps through turn one, even though it was almost two and a half seconds off of my fastest lap. Um, so I only found that by going through and looking um, through all these different laps. Uh, this was an endurance race with WRL at Road Atlanta, so there's a lot of traffic and other things like that in a front-wheel drive car, a Mazda MX-3, very much so a momentum car, even though all cars are momentum cars. Just a little background info. Right here you can see this is turn one, so that's braking for turn one. I'm going to pinch out, uh, pinch into the speed trace a little bit just to get a little more resolution because what I want to look at right here is where I'm braking. So the blue lap is lap 35, this lap right here. I brake a little bit earlier, maybe 20 to 30 feet um, at the most, maybe even closer than that. But what I wanna really look at here is on the exit of turn one, as I climb up the hill, first of all, the car is not gaining speed at wide open throttle up the hill. But second of all, I carried a higher speed all the way through the corner. We can see that there's less of a dip here when I overlay it down here with lap 33. Uh, even though I braked later on lap 33. I had a better run down the front straightaway, so this was a better beginning to the lap in general. But I'm just trying to emphasize that turn one is not about braking as late as possible. You want to get in your threshold. If you're braking way too early, it is definitely going to affect your lap time. But once you get comfortable braking, you know, somewhere close to the end of that wall on the left side of the track, for most cars, really fast cars, maybe a little sooner, for most cars on stickier tires, that's where you're going to start your initial braking. You don't want to break too hard and you want to get back to throttle real early, preferably just before the apex. Um, and I would recommend just overlaying multiple laps, um, start with your fastest lap and then start going back three laps. I was really surprised that this lap was so quick and you can see they're really, really similar. If you go to the game loss channel, you can actually see the time difference and it's very minimal. I gained about two tenths of a second um, from breaking slightly earlier and rolling more speed through the corner on this lap versus this lap. But as you can see, it's really, really close. Um, so get comfortable braking fairly late, but not so late that you brake too hard. Work on a softer brake, roll a lot of entry speed, make the chassis really stable. Your minimum corner speed is probably going to be close to 80 miles per hour as it was in this car, about 81, just under 81 miles an hour at the apex of the corner. All right, next I'm going to look at turn five, and we're going to use the longitudinal G channel on turn five. Um, so this is just very high level, but what I want to look at in turn five, and that's this corner right here, I'm going to go over to the analysis screen here, I'm going to pull up longitudinal G, I'm going to go back to this more macro view, uh, and now we see this very busy accelerometer readout here, uh, our accelerometer um, readings from, uh, you know, looking at longitudinal G, so negative below zero is going to be braking forces, positive above zero is going to be acceleration forces, um, that's driving down the hill. You can see how hard it's accelerating going down the hill right there. So my peak braking force should be right here. Um, and that's correct, that's turn 10A. So that's going down at your highest speed, uh, your hardest braking point on the track. That's threshold braking into 10A right there. Um, what I wanna see in turn five, and I'm gonna move this, the slider forward until I'm at turn five so I can see where my deceleration force is for turn five, it's right here, all right? My goal and all I want to do looking at this here is I want to make sure on most of my laps, and I'm going to actually go to my faster lap because it'll be emphasized even more, but look how that peak deceleration is not as hard of a deceleration as over here at 10A or over here at 7. And that's important because turn 5 is not a super hard brake corner. It's really easy to brake too hard because it's uphill. So all I want you to do is go into long G and double check that you're not braking too hard. If this spike right here is equal to or, or greater uh, in deceleration than this one, work on a softer brake. If it's not, don't work on a softer brake. You're probably good. Just work on your cadence or your release of the brake pedal. So that's turn 5. 
very uphill, soft brake, stabilize the car, get the car turned, make sure you get a nice late apex, but also still get on the throttle as early as you possibly can there. Uh, turn six, that's the next corner. I'm gonna go back to the satellite image here, and we're gonna zoom into turn six. I'm gonna orient it so that you're looking at it the way that you're approaching it. Now turn six is a pretty quick corner at the apex. We're doing right around 70 miles per hour in most cars. Um, anything with 200 treadwear tires, that's probably going to be close to your minimum corner speed. Now here I'm going to look at lap 42 is going to be my baseline lap, and then I'm going to double, uh, or I'm going to press and hold on lap 27 uh, because I want to emphasize that turn six is an earlier turn in than most people think. And I noticed this while racing there with WRL a couple weekends ago, particularly is behind an NC Miata, and he really wanted to drive real deep. You can kind of see where this line actually is right here, right? He wanted to drive deep and not start turning until about here, which is how you would approach that corner if there was a long straightaway afterwards. Um, but in this case, we're actually going to be slowing down immediately again for turn seven. So the turn six is all about rolling speed. And honestly, I could still probably turn a little bit sooner and carry a little more speed. Um, and that's something that I've constantly worked on throughout the weekend. But what I want to show you guys here is the little slight variation in the GP3 right here. This kind of indentation in the, in the asphalt or that darkening color, that's where most of the cars, that's the path where most of the cars are going to follow. Um, so if that's in the middle of the car, I'm probably pretty close to it on both laps. Um, but a lot of times you can actually just overlay and see if you're actually turning in late and squaring off this corner, your GPS line is going to go out here and then start turning and you're going to be behind this guy. You always want to be ahead of it or basically just focusing on entry speed here is what's going to value uh, or help our lap time the most. Um, so I'm going to bring the ticker forward here and show you guys two laps that are almost even, the blue laps ahead. But look at the gap here, they're really close, right on top of each other, turned in earlier, and I'm already pulling a gap. Didn't get to the throttle, but look at the exit. Because of that entry speed, look how far ahead I am on the lap where I rolled entry speed, which was the blue lap. The red lap I turned in slightly later and slowed a little bit more. That's going to help your lap time a whole lot more because in about 50 feet, we're going to be slamming on the brakes again, getting the car woke down for seven. Um, so turn six. If anybody tells you it's a late turn in, it's not. The reason it's not, um, one, is because entry speed's all that matters because you're going to be braking again. Um, and two, all the really, really fast guys, all the IMSA pros, all the cars that do testing at Road Atlanta, they know this. They know that entry speed is what creates lap time in turn six. So they turn in as early as they possibly can, really put a lot of weight on that left outside tire, and that's kind of cut a groove in the asphalt there over the years, and now that's actually the line that the car wants to go on. The car naturally wants to follow that slightly earlier turn in. So don't fight the car, let it turn in a little bit earlier and you'll find time in turn six. I hope this was helpful. I uh, hope you are enjoying using your Apex Pro. Let us know if you have any questions about anything. Thanks a lot.